this is just straight hate by a guy who's jealous that he's still playing at a high level at 45 when you had to stop at 35. Yeah. That make it seem like I was a bum. Okay, I'm run. going to have at it. I am in disbelief that I'm actually making a video on this topic. I know a lot of people would say, Mike, this was obvious that it was going to happen eventually. But to be honest, I didn't think it was going to happen eventually. I felt like this was a very mutually beneficial relationship that was going to keep going. And it looks like I'm wrong, which is leading us all to one particular question. Why? Why would Shannon Sharp and Skip Bayless break up? Well, we're going to get to that in this video before we get to the content. We are running another $1,000 giveaway. I'll tell you how to enter after the intro. Now that we got all that out of the way. Break! So we have a $1,000 giveaway from Prize Picks. They're giving five of us a chance to win $1,000. All you have to do is click the link in the description down below to sign up for a chance to be selected to make a five pick flex to win $1,000. They're also giving us a free square. Nikola Jokic just needs one point in order for his square to hit, which means we only need one more pick in order to make money here. I'm just gonna play it safe, man. We're gonna do Caleb Martin 12.5 points, rebounds, and assists in the first half. And if he hits that, we make $75. Use my promo code microphone to get up to a $100 deposit match on prize picks. Now let's get to the video. Mike check 1212. What's going on everybody? In 2016, Fox Sports decided to make one of their biggest moves to date, poaching Skip Bayless away from ESPN and ESPN's first take. And to be honest, it didn't really seem like his colleagues were going to miss him very much. I mean, you remember when Scott Van Pelt said this shortly after LeBron James came back from a 3-1 one deficit in the 2016 NBA Finals, which coincided with Skip Bayless's departure, by the way. With LeBron James now unimpeachable, back-to-back 41-point -back games and then a triple-double in Game 7 on the road, and that's the end of it. It is time to find a new axe to grind if you have made your living ripping him. Find a new axe. The plan was very simple. Instead of having Stephen A. Smith featured alongside Skip Bayless on first take, which Stephen A. Smith credits Skip Bayless for helping him tremendously in his career and without a doubt forming his career. Skip Bayless picked out Stephen A. Smith and said, hey, I want this guy to be my co-host and we'll be able to deliver ratings. And he pretty much created the modern day sports debate show that is replicated to a nauseating degree, might I add. So Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp started Undisputed in 2016. And I will be honest, it had its good times like this. Your day coming. You laughing right now, Skip. <laughs> yeah, you keep, keep, keep it. But your day coming. Your day coming. Yeah. Your day a wreck. You gonna have to deal with me, Skip Bayless. I'm gonna be unsufferable. But then there were some really bad points as well. For instance, the Dallas Cowboys quarterback, which by the way, Skip Bayless is notorious for being a huge Dallas Cowboys fan. Dak Prescott has gone through one of the most difficult things I think any human could ever experience in their lifetime. And that's watching his mother pass away due to cancer and and his brother, who was so depressed at watching his mother deteriorate while she was going through chemotherapy, he ended his own life after. And this resulted in one of the most insensitive things that I think Skip Bayless has ever said. I don't have sympathy for him going public with, I got depressed. He's the quarterback of America's team. If you reveal publicly any little weakness, it can affect your team's ability to believe in you in the toughest spot. And Skip Bale is having one of the most insensitive responses to it ever. And this would be a bit of a foreshadowing because Skip Bayless definitely tends to push the issue. He definitely could be insensitive sometimes, but at the same time, when you are on a sports debate show on a daily basis and also kind of need to let leverage controversy in order to generate views and ratings, then sometimes you could be prone to going way too far. And don't get me wrong, the Dak Prescott stuff was one of the worst things I think I've ever seen on television, but he apologized and we moved on. But it seemed like there were things going on behind the scenes as well. And the very first time we saw some issues going on behind the scenes between Skip and Shannon was when they were arguing over Baker Mayfield of all people. And this is when you started to see the fact that Shannon Sharp was starting to get a little sick of Skip Bayless, watch. Baker Mayfield is dead last in 2022 at QBR. Blah, blah, He's blah. dead last, I don't blah, care, blah, 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 blah,
blah, blah, blah. So you could see, man, like if you're talking to another man about anything and you're providing factual data consistently, you're giving statistics about why Baker Mayfield has been terrible, which to Shannon Sharp's credit up until that point, Baker Mayfield was still on the Carolina Panthers. He was playing pretty terribly. And all your co-host is doing is saying blah, 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 blah. Obviously this is gonna irritate you a little bit. Now, part of me still feels like this was kind of scripted to be honest, but- You gonna let me talk? Because that's if what you do. If you stay on point on questions. You never stay on point. Okay. I'm I about to stay on point. You, hey, all right. That's right. Spew all your hate. I, I'm going to spew it your all. Your hates. For the most part, I think it's more of the same here. But they get a little personal around this point in regards to each other's importance to the show. I'm going to let the world know exactly what he uh, is. Oh, you have four heard Twitter followers. Don't worry about Hold on. Yeah. We talk about Twitter. And yeah. we come out here and discuss topics that you okay. tweeted. Okay. So don't give me about that Twitter stuff. Mm. You can talk about my followers all you want. He's talking about my Twitter followers. Mm. That's what I know I got it. Uh, and I'm going to continue to go. Uh, He's 187. Tell me when it's my it's turn. It's not your turn. Uh, okay. It's like, are you going to let me talk? And then Skip Bayless saying, if you answer, I'll let you. And then Shannon Sharp saying, you never stay on point. But to be honest, it looks like they're kind of smiling and memeing each other. And it didn't really seem like something that they took very seriously. So I guess if you wanted to say that this was their very first incident, it would be a little bit of a stretch. But things would get worse way way worse a month later and i think this is something that is without a doubt very real and that's when skip bayless straight up disrespected shannon sharp to his face still playing at a high level at 45 when you had to stop at 35 yeah, that's what you that's do. the point that's what you do every time somebody every time i call something into question i'm jealous no yeah, i did well, what i never I did. said you were jealous of baker mayfield yeah. now for those of you guys that don't know skip bayless goes out to defend tom brady as much as he possibly could and this is another example of him pushing the issue a little bit too far, where he straight up compares Shannon Sharp to Tom Brady. I did what I did. You make it seem like I was a bum. I'm in the effing Hall of Fame. Okay, I so got what? three Super Bowls. So what? so what? And then Skip Bayless takes things a little bit too far when he says this. He's way better than you were. I'm better way than you. Better. Skip, what are you I got to see what you do. You take personal shots. No, when you put this I don't, I don't take personal oh, shots. You time started time it. Time out. You would take a personal shot at me. I so didn't take a personal shot at you. Wait a minute. What are you talking about? You would take a personal shot. Put your glasses back on. Can I finish? You're willing to take a personal shot at me to say this man is better than me because I say he's playing bad this year? Well, because you 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 just Go ahead. you disrespect him. It, it's just so. And Shannon Sharp definitely didn't take that well. It, so you, just, you know what? It's beneath your you dignity. You would disrespect me to no. support him. No, well, I'll, I'll support him over anybody because he's the greatest player who ever have played your it. game, and it's by have far. At it. Have at it. Okay? Take off, I'm going to have at it because I'm going to have at you. And if you look at this particular clip compared to the first clip I showed you, there's clear differences. The first time i guess you could say it was a little bit of a subtle jab at one another it's like you never stay on point or you never let me talk but in this particular instance i have to admit this was very disrespectful to shannon sharp and shannon sharp's career i mean shannon sharp is one of the greatest tight ends in nfl history he's one of the most decorated tight ends in nfl history as well his career longevity should be admired especially considering the fact that he wasn't supposed to be this good coming out of the nfl draft it's truly an excellent football career and to disrespect him by comparing him to a player that plays a completely different position than him in a different era who is widely regarded as the greatest NFL player of all time is very disrespectful to Shannon Sharp and Shannon Sharp's achievements. To give you an idea, most football players don't win a Super Bowl. Phillip Rivers didn't win a Super Bowl. Dan Marino didn't win a Super Bowl. Barry Sanders didn't win a Super Bowl. Adrian Peterson didn't win a Super Bowl. And then you have Shannon Sharp that won three Super Bowls and made it to four first-team All-Pros and was a four-time first-team All-Pro and a one-time second-team All-Pro and made it to eight Pro Bowls. This is a seventh-round pick in the NFL draft. I made a hell of a career for himself and is actually making a remarkable career for himself during his post playing days as well. And I guess you could say that things really started to take a turn here. Now, Skip Bayless would apologize to Shannon Sharp about this on his podcast. Brothers fight. Shannon and I compete hard on Undisputed. What's the theme song? No Mercy. I have the highest regard for Shannon Sharp because he prepares and he competes so hard. He's my toughest opponent ever. It's not even close. 
and I love to do battle with my man, even though occasionally we go a little too far. But if you happen to be actually watching the live episode this past Monday, we both got over it very quickly. We moved right along. We got right back on track, business as usual, for the final, what, hour and 45 minutes of Undisputed on Monday. But it wouldn't take very long for, once again, another controversy to happen. Now, at this point, it's been three incidents in a span of three months where Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp have had some sort of issue. And to be honest, I feel like this tweet got way more hate than it should have. Like, I really don't think it was a tweet that deserved 170 million views. But to understand what this tweet is about, you have to understand the context of the situation. This was very shortly after Damar Hamlin took a life-threatening hit on national television. And Skip Bayless's response to this was, no doubt the NFL is considering postponing the rest of this game, but how? This late in the season, a game of this magnitude is crucial to the regular season outcome, which suddenly seems so irrelevant. Now, immediately people were upset at Skip Bayless for not thinking of Damar Hamlin's health first, but he does have other tweets being concerned about Damar Hamlin's health. It seemed like he was just firing a bunch of tweets, trying to ask questions about every single potential issue that could come up. And I feel like people took this as Damar Hamlin's health is irrelevant to the game. I personally took it as this is a very significant game. How's the NFL going to handle the scheduling of the game when they have something way more important that they need to attend to, which is clearly Damar Hamlin's health. Unfortunately, on the internet and especially on Twitter, you only have so many characters to try to write out what you're trying to say. And if you aren't crystal clear about your language, especially when you have a whole mob of people that really just want an excuse to dislike you, people are gonna take your words and automatically assume the worst. The result of this was Shannon Sharp no-showed Undisputed the next day. And Skip Bayless ended up doing Undisputed alone. If you'd like to tweet us your emotions of the night, about what happened, please do so. You can tweet us at, at undisputed. The last thing we wanna do is offend anyone by trying to do what we always do, which is talk about sports. Obviously, my partner Shannon Sharp is not here today. I look forward to seeing him tomorrow. All of this brings us to some breaking news and some very significant news to me especially. According to Ari Mayrov, per the sports report and via the New York Post, NFL Hall of Fame tight end Shannon Sharp has reached a buyout agreement with FS1 and his final appearance on Undisputed is expected to be after the NBA Finals per at Sports Report. Now we have a lot more info on this and some very significant information might I add. A lot of you guys might be wondering what Shannon Sharp's future gonna look like and what about Club Shay Shay? Well, Club Shay Shay, which also draws a big audience on social media and YouTube will also be leaving Fox Sports. So we don't really know what Undisputed is going to look like after the NBA Finals. I'm assuming it's going to look like this. Aaron Rodgers is historically, transcendentally, specially great. No, nope. You know why? Because Aaron Rodgers is hot and Aaron Rodgers is cold. Are you kidding me? He is me? not consistently, historically great, transcendentally great. He's above anybody who's playing this game on a human level right now. He's also the most overhyped quarterback in the history of pro football. That is the most laughable statement you have ever made in the history of this show. Okay? So it's, it's Aaron bleeping Rodgers. He's errant Rodgers. E-R-R-A-N-T Rodgers. Jokes aside, a lot of people are trying to nail what incident was the straw that broke the camel's back. Obviously, there's a lot of tension over the past three to four months. I don't think these two individuals dislike each other at all whatsoever. I think it's the fact that these two were in a relationship over the past seven years. And relationships, whether they're business, whether they're personal, at times, whenever you spend a lot of time with one particular human that you don't necessarily always agree with, and the TV show is profiting off of the fact that you two don't always see eye to eye, that you two actually get emotional at one another, at some point, someone may go way too far, there may be a straw that breaks the camel's back, and that might be it. I don't think Shannon Sharp hates Skip Bayless because at the end of the day, Skip Bayless elevated Shannon Sharp's career, whether you want to admit it or not. I also believe Skip Bayless is one of the most irreplaceable co-hosts in all of sports media, not because he gives excellent takes, 
but it's because this guy quite literally doesn't care about what anyone thinks about him. He could say the most horrible stuff and his co-host could come in and look like he's a superhero just because he doesn't agree with the horrible thing he says, or his co-host will come in and set him straight. And at the end of the day, it will generate a lot of views and it'll generate a lot of clicks, which at the end of the day turns into additional revenue for the company. There's a reason why Undisputed is the top sports show in America. It's not because they give great takes, it's because it's very entertaining and Skid Bayless knows how to leverage controversy. And to be honest, there's not a lot of people that are as good as him at doing so. It doesn't necessarily have to do with him giving perfect takes all the time, or at all, to be honest. It's the fact that him and Shannon had remarkable chemistry. To be honest, I think I'm going to be really sad to see them part ways, but it was going to have to happen eventually. I feel like both of these individuals are going to be fine. I feel like Shannon Sharp's going to be okay, because at this point, he's a beloved figure in all of sports media. Whether he decides to go independent, which he definitely could, by the way, and he'll do fine, because if you watch Club Shay, it's very obvious that athletes are very comfortable talking to him. Or if he decides to go to ESPN and do first take with Stephen A. Smith, which would definitely be interesting, but I'm assuming there's some sort of exclusivity clause in the buyout where Shannon Sharp can't immediately jump ship to ESPN. Regardless, I am sad that this happened. I think it's more of a symptom of after seven years of doing a show with each other each and every day, maybe Shannon Sharp just had enough. Maybe it got too much for him to bear. Maybe there was no upside for him to stay back. Maybe Fox didn't offer him enough money to stay back. Maybe they felt like Shannon Sharp was replaceable, which don't get me wrong is a huge risk. But bringing on Skip Bayless to do the show with Shannon Sharp in the beginning was a huge risk. And it ended up paying off. I have no doubt in my mind that Shannon Sharp's going to be okay. I have no doubt in my mind that I think Skip Bayless is going to be okay. I am more curious about what the future is going to hold for Skip Bayless, to be honest. And as a person that does some derivative of what these two gentlemen do, but online, I have tremendous gratitude for them both because the idea of me making this YouTube channel, and I actually said this to Shannon Sharp's face at the gym. Well, I didn't say this exactly. What I told him was, hey, I saw your show and it inspired me to make my own online sports show. The reality was, was I saw their show and I was like, I think I could give a better take than that. <laughs> Regardless, I have tremendous gratitude for what these two legends did for our industry. I wish them both the best, and I can't wait to see what they do next. Let me know what you guys think about all this in the comment section down below. Aside from that, I'm your boy Mike, and I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.